That was a tough act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Peggy. Uh, my name is Deb Deborah Yablonski. I live um, Moroni Road. I have property on Nib Road. I'm on the corner there. Um, I came from New York 25 plus years ago. Um, uh, anyway, I came from New York 25 plus years ago. I lived in Providence for a short time, came for school and work. Um, got broken into a number of times at my apartment. Someone said they were moving out of a farm in Pasco, Rhode Island. <laughs> Even people in Providence never heard of Pasco at the time. Um, but I, on my lunch hour, I drove out here. I was late for work. Who cares? Um, the place was a wreck. It was a dairy farm. Um, more acres than I think my whole town was in New York. Um, and it was for rent, and it was the house was horrible, and the property was overgrown, and I was like, I love it, I'll rent it, um, right? I stayed there, I have not left, I ended up purchasing it um, in 1985. Um, the house had salvage value the day we closed on the house. The roof leaked, we had a dug well um, that ran out of water in June. Um, it's been... <laughs> Um, our intention at the time also, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm ramble, but I'm not used to this. I'm a farmer now. I am a full-blown farmer. Quit my food um, yeah. But anyway, um, the house, we bought all the property. We had a relationship with the owners. They saw that we really respected the property when it became um, available for sale. Um, we asked them how much the house was worth, it had salvage value. That was it. So it was like, okay, well, five acres, it was five acres zoning. They gave us like a great price. I said, okay, well, how about to the corner, the next one? How about across the street? How about the whole thing? We bought the whole thing. Our intention was we borrowed money. We had 11 and a half percent interest on our mortgage. Um, it was a little crazy. Young and very idealistic, I'm sure. But our plan was, the property, we, um, we wanted to have children. We figured it was an investment. We would sell off house, five acre house lots um, and pay for college and the improvements on the house. We have not sold one acre because we felt very responsible and it is, I called it God's country. I never knew anybody called it God's country. I could not imagine. I would not have a new car in order to pay for that land and improvements. Um, it seemed like um, it was kind of, I was a real steward. I became a steward of, of the land and, and I, um, this whole area and the people, the community, um, it's just really worth saving and that's why we're all here and this community is so impressive. Um, I just, anyway, uh, that's just my backstory, my story. And I am within three miles south of in Benergy's proposed site. It might be two miles, but that's a code of profiles. But um, we do have most of our land in open space and wildlife habitat. I raise goats for meat and dairy. I raise chickens for eggs and meat. I raise rabbits for meat. I raise probably something else to eat. Um, vegetables, herbs, flowers. Um, we produce this for our own family, plus our friends. And within our community, I've managed the Virgil farm, Farmer's Market. I was a vendor manager, I manage it. Um, since its birth in 2006, it was originally started by the Virgil Land Trust and was given to us and we became independent a year later. Um, and we're a really hardworking, passionate bunch of farmers, local farmers and artisans. We have artisans. Um, uh, we community events. We we partner with um, different organizations. Um, it's we try and just it's kind of low key. It's small compared to the rest of the state's farmers markets. But the reason it's small, I think, is because a lot of people in Burbal grow their own gardens. We can't sell tomatoes in Burbal. Everybody grows them in their backyard. <laughs> I mean, you know, really, it's crazy. Um, and we have good water now, um, and when we didn't have good water, we shared our good water um, with our neighbors. Um, I 
saying this also, and even Zamborano Hospital, they even grow their own food at times. They have a horticultural pro program they have had forever. Um, it comes and goes a little bit. But I wonder how um, we can do that when we don't know what's contaminating, what the residue from this plant is going to do to our, to our water, to our land. Um, another thing, right, right is the water, watering the plant right on Buck Hill is a large cornfield and that is silage for cows who um, their milk is part of, their milk is um, sold to uh, the farmer's cow, Cooperative Dairy in Connecticut also. That is like a stone's throw from there. Um, there's people who pasture animals. Um, and the reason I spoke to you is because it just popped into my head. I had a conversation with the farmer who I purchased this land from, and it was a dairy. They had 250 dairy cow. Um, there was a fire there, the cows were outside. But he had told me a story about, um, I don't know if it was in the 60s or the 50s, there was a large fire somewhere out. Uh, 50s. It was the 50s, and where was, I don't remember the details. I think Could it was, you start wrapping up? Okay, it was in the Midwest, anyway. It was, it was far away, it was in the Midwest. They could, because of the known carcinogens at that time that drifted this far into New England, into Rhode Island, they couldn't, their milk was tested every week. Any residue, the milk had to be dumped. This went on for like a year, he said. They could not even graze the animals that the, the milk, that the, those cows that were being milked. They couldn't graze them on that land. They had to purchase all their hay, have it all brought in Connecticut, if they had to be fed. And they were still, you know, the air they breathed, they were tested. Um, I just wonder how, like, what is that gonna do to a uh, residential and agricultural community? What is this residue gonna do to us? Um, you know, like me who wants to try and be a full-time farmer, and that's like cool now. My kids grew up and it wasn't cool. It's cool now. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I just wonder how we're going to um, control that. And morally, how can I, as a manager of the farmer's market and try and sell my product, tell people that this is good food? And right now, when they're local, is great. And we Sorry, but you're two minutes over. Okay. Uh, well, I just hope you do the, do the right thing. And farming is challenging as it is. Raising kids is, is challenging. Um, we all have different backgrounds, um, and we're all trying to do our best. I hope that you will also and respect this community. Thanks.